How are batteries for electric vehicles tested? It's kind of a mystery. Well, fortunately, there's a procedure for this. There's a set of very important best practices that are used by electric vehicle manufacturers to test batteries to make sure that they can hold up to the job of powering a vehicle. Now, for used vehicles to retest these to make sure they're still in good shape before you buy a vehicle, uh, that's a different story. And you can check out our website, evcheckout.com. You'll see the link below. But many of the testing procedures should be the same. You want to make sure that the battery is in good condition for an electric vehicle. But for a new vehicle, it's a little more rigorous. And here's the Electric Vehicle Battery Test Procedures Manual. This is the official manual for testing electric vehicles. So what's in the procedure for testing a battery to make sure that it's going to survive the lifespan of an electric vehicle? Well, first, they have a whole series of tests that they describe in this outline. Um, they conduct battery commissioning. They check constant current, peak power, constant power, variable power. And then other things such as vibration, thermal temperature, hill climb, stand. And we'll talk about stand because that's an important one. And they have an analysis of those. They even have a flow chart for how they do it. They have a test plan to receive the battery, conduct readiness to make sure the battery is in good con physical condition to do the core testing. And then if it uh, proceeds through that section, they have a yes or no logic to see if it should go further. Um, they do periodic reference performance tests. Is that the end of tests? No. They do a final life cycle test and it goes through this logic tree to see what are the next steps required. And then here's the organizational chart of the different tests. You notice that they have performance test, safety abuse test, and life cycle test. Three different categories. The performance test has the most variety within it. Is it constant current, peak power? And then under the special test, you notice vibration, charge optimization, fast charge, thermal performance, hill climb, and then the stand test. Again, it's, it's mentioned once again. They even go so far as to do a battery pre-test preparation to make sure that before they do the test, that everything's gonna be valid with the results by making sure that the condition of the battery is good, that the rate of capacity is used for the, uh, for the measurement to make sure it's, it's plugged into the system the right way. And each one of the tests, like for example, this is the peak power test, has scientific calculations behind it. The battery resistance, resistance equals voltage and delta um, of the different numbers that show up, peak power capability. They have all of the uh, scientific uh, calculations and formulas that go along with that um, and what all the terminologies are behind each one of the formulas. They show an example profile, base current, high test current, uh, and it proceeds under the y-axis of milliseconds, how much time it takes for each one of these events to occur. Same thing for the discharge power. They have a chart for this to show what the percent of peak discharge power is. So these are very comprehensive and scientific tests to show what are the profiles. This is going to be important for electric vehicles because, you know, the, the, the lifespan of the vehicle and the safety of the occupant is based on this battery being there when you need it. Right? If this battery doesn't work, your car's not going to go anywhere. And if it happens in the middle of traffic or when you need to get someplace, it's not going to be a good thing. And here's again where they talk about stand. That's self-discharge. What happens when a car is parked for a long period of time to the range or charging state of the battery? If you take a gasoline vehicle and you put it in a parking lot and you let it sit there for two months, the amount of gas in that gas tank isn't going to go anywhere. You still have the same range when you get in, start up, and drive away. Electric vehicles are a different story. The static charge rate of that vehicle might change over time, even if the vehicle is not used. There may be parasitic draw from different systems that maybe upgrade computers, maybe keep track of um, the ambient temperature. There may be even a heater. If the battery gets below a certain temperature, it may warm up that battery. That may draw the battery down. Even without any draws, some batteries will gradually lose capacity over time. That's going to be something to know about because cars aren't always used and charged all the time. You want to make sure that the self-discharge is not going to be a problem. And then, of course, vibration. Cars, by definition, are different than you know a battery in a smoke detector at your house or in your TV or even in your phone right? Because your phone is in your pocket. It doesn't have the same 
type of vibration as a car bouncing over potholes going down the road. Vibration can affect the structural integrity of the cells in a battery and even change the molecular breakdown of the components in a battery. And over time, that could reduce the lifespan and longevity of the battery unit which powers the car. So how do they do that battery vibration test? It's to characterize the effect of long-term road-induced vibration and shock on the performance and service life. For testing efficiency, a time-compressed vibration redeem is employed. What does this mean, time-compressed? Uh, time well, you don't want to see how batteries kind of last over 10 years by testing it for 10 years. You're going to compress that time into a shorter period of time. You want to do it over a three axial direction because vibrations of a car happen in all different directions. And if you only sh shook it in one direction, you may not get the right, um, the right performance results. And they have shaker tables, right? Exactly what it sounds like. It's a table that shakes and you can test it on that, um, on that regime. And they use different sine waves. Is the vibration slow? Is it fast? Is it um, jumbled up is it regular or not regular and all those can affect the chemistry of a battery and here's an example of those sine waves 60 sine wave sweeps from 10 hertz up to 190 hertz frequency range peak acceleration that's how abrupt and how severe the each one of those shakes is lateral axis vertical axis uh, so it's complicated you know they do these uh, vibration tests considering it's a very important um, design feature of that battery Here's a sample results profile from cumulative exposure to vibration, peak acceleration in Gs, what happens to the cumulative occurrences per axis, so you can do the test according to what the scientific profile should be. Part of the special testing also includes safety and abuse testing. This is something where you want to look at what's called a worst case accident, an unintentional abuse, like you drive over a rock. Um, you have debris on the road or the vehicle is impacted. Part of it is to make sure the battery is most survivable, but because of the fact that a battery is a high energy device, you also want to look at safety, meaning that if the battery is impacted, is it going to create a safety hazard for the occupants or rescuers or first responders? Gasoline in a gas tank has the same thing. If you breach a gas tank, gas spills on the ground, it can catch on fire and burn people in the vicinity. A battery has similar type of danger profiles where if a battery shorts out and it puts 200 volts into the frame of the car and you step out you could get electrocuted if it puts dangerous chemicals in contact with occupants or first responders that could be a problem other things such as um, extraction in an accident if somebody gets an accident the car's crumpled if a first responder has to cut through a pillars or b pillars and it shorts out the battery is that going to create an explosion these are safety features that have to be considered because electric vehicles don't have the same um, experience of use as gasoline vehicles. And this is the most important one. They're going to look at life cycle. How many charges and discharges can this battery withstand before it starts losing significant amounts of capacity? If a battery charges and discharges 20 times and it's it loses half its value, that's going to be no good for a vehicle because you're going to charge this vehicle at least once or twice a week. Once or twice a week, in four years, you know, you're talking a thousand charge cycles. In that, you're going to expect in four years, you want that battery to still be a, a valuable component of a motor vehicle. And here's one of the criteria for that stand test. They're going to have a specified stand test period. The default is 48 hours or 30 days long term. In our opinion, 30 days is not long enough. I mean, you could go and you could park your car when you go on vacation. Maybe it's a second vehicle at a second home. Uh, maybe it's not used frequency. It could easily go, there's a lot of cars that go beyond 30 days without use. So you want to make sure that the actual use or maximum use is considered for these different types of tests for an electric vehicle battery.